this is the first slide that I have here. Yeah, like what Michelle said. Hey, it's positive. Okay. On April 28th, property market continued to stabilizing. Okay, by Desmond Lee. Um, what I wove here okay, is this the market has caught up on construction delays. Okay. So it is stabilizing. Lah. Okay, so what we should expect from this article is that the prices should uh stabilizing. What does it mean by stabilizing? Okay, does it mean to continue go up or maybe stay sideways for, for a period of time? What do you all think? If you think it's sideways, press one. If you think it's continue go up, then you put zero. Yeah, I rephrase my I rephrase my question. Huh? Uh, what does it mean by continue the market continue to stabilizing? Stabilizing means what? The price will continue to go up or the price will stabilize in a way that it will it will it will it will go sideways. So if you think it's sideways, you press one. If you think it's going to continue to go up, you press two. Uh, uh, two. Okay. Okay. Sideways. So most of your thing is sideways. Yeah. So this is April 28th. Then uh April, three days later, okay, these kind of things have uh, news come out again. Okay, five room resale flat, Bukit Merah goes for record 1.59. HDB, uh, HDB uh, 1.59. Wow. Do you see this? Are, are you all tired of this, uh, this kind of article? Okay, At almost every other month or every month I have, uh, we see, we hear news about HDB going record price. Yeah, so I feel uh, today if you are a buyer, right, that means you still have any house yet. And you're looking for a house to buy, right? Well, actually, it can be quite stressful. Eh? Okay, I just have a friend who called me uh, and asked me whether should, should she go ahead with, with, with certain things because yeah, it's really quite quite stressful. Eh? Because if, if you want uh, near MRT, you want good location, high floor, all the good attributes, one, uh, renovated house, right? Then the seller will, de will definitely want to ask for higher. Okay, I mean, if we flip side, if you are the seller who have a good attribute house, I think you will also want to. Uh, sell at a very good price. Okay, but is this sustainable or not? Can this carry on forever? Right? Okay, so this is something to ask ourselves. So the question here is, is the HDB prices likely to increase further? Mm -hmm. Okay. Here I have a very important chart. Okay, it's a HDB index uh, graph. Okay. And you can see this uh, in the HDB portal. It's from HDB. And the public can 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 go go to this stuff. Very very uh open one in Singapore. Now over here I can see a few uh patterns here that I can share with you. Broad patterns lah. Like over here it goes up. Okay, and then it goes sideways. It goes up, and then it goes sideways. And today we are here. It goes up. Okay, so what does this pattern shows us, right? Okay. Or, or shows me, or in my opinion, what I can see is that, um, let's say, okay, the person who bought here, okay, bought here, okay, uh, probably around 2003, okay, 2003, uh, by the time uh, he's here, right, which has already hit the what, all-time high at this, point, at, at this point of time, at probably 2010, 2010, it has, it has hit, all-time high okay very common uh will this seller right or this owner uh, will ask himself one question okay where will the price hit next okay at this point of time uh he will not know where the price will go he don't have this foresight of this 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 part yet okay he won't have okay either the price will go up or the price will go down or the price will go sideways nobody will know Okay, same as today. The price can go up, continue to go up, okay? And it will go sideways or it can go down. Okay, so as a seller, uh, you're also thinking, should I sell today or not? Okay, or, or as an owner, should I sell today or not? Because if I sell today, uh, tomorrow uh, it goes up, uh, I hop in uh, yeah, I should sell later so that I can earn more profits. Okay, or you could think, I better sell today. If not, the price go down, uh, I look it. Yeah. So the goal of this chart today here, right, is to tell us uh, that we never know. Uh. The point here is we never know. 
Okay, the price can do three, one of the three things. We will never know. But look at this seller who actually sell at the so-called the all-time high in 2010. Okay, he would have already, uh, you know, uh, put his capital, okay, into another property. Because after you sell, you sure need to buy, ma. You cannot be no place to stay, ma. Okay, and the key question you need to ask is what happens to the next property? Is the next property giving uh, her more profit? All right. So it's not so much about whether the price go up, go sideways, or go down. Okay. In fact, I'm going to just uh, uh, show you here. Okay. After the price peak right here, oh, come right there. After the price peak here, okay, let me use a different color. After the price peak here, it takes about 12 years here to uh from the from the, to to reach back the peak okay so what i mean here is that the peak is here when you slide down it takes 12 years to get back to the same peak then the price go up again okay and then uh over from 2007 to 2013 the price went up again okay and then later it takes about eight years for the price to get back to the peak again and then you push push up. So today, what we want to ask uh, is this. Okay, we do not know where the price will go next, but as a, a somebody who is invested or somebody who is interested in Singapore property, uh, what should I do? Okay, what should I do? Okay, because right, okay, once we the price slide, right, okay, it could take eight, to 12 years, you know, for the price to get back to, to this level. Okay, let's say, let's say, let's say today the price starts to slide. It may take eight to 12 years to get back the price. And you need to ask yourself, are you willing to um waste this time? Are you willing to take this, you know, to, to waste this time? Okay. So this seller here choose not to. And he is actually reinvested into another property. Hopefully, is doing well. But if not, right? If this seller here, okay, this one, this one, okay. If this seller here did, oh, sorry, this owner here did not choose to sell, and he actually wanted to sell, but he did not choose to sell, and later on, he will need to wait eight years for he or or she to get back to the same level. And these eight years, right? Uh, is anyone is it worthwhile to waste this time or not? So this is something to help to 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 ask ourselves. Okay, okay. I'm not here trying to say that you must sell, huh? I'm just saying to say that this is what the graph shows us, and this is what we can learn from history. Okay, and uh, a lot of times maybe don't sell. Okay, is the best thing to do because your horizon can be different. Your objective of getting the house is different. Okay, so to each his own. Please remember that. Okay, now let's move on. So what happened in 2013, if you can remember? In 2013, the price peak, uh, okay? Yeah, 2013, the price peak. Okay, over here. So what happens in terms of volume? 2013, can you see the volume drop? Okay, when the volume drop, the price also have to follow suit. Lah. So over in 2021, you can see we can see volume start to drop also. Okay. Of course, it's only three years here. But of course, if this year um the volume start to be somewhere around here, I would still I would say that it's, it's definitely is dropping in terms of our resale volume. Okay. Now what happened in 2013? What happened here? Okay, let's see. Uh, this uh, the wording very small, so I have already um uh, uh bring it bring this bigger. So first thing that they did is they HDB loans, last time was 30 years. They reduce it to 25 years. How does it impact us as a HDB borrower, HDB loan borrower? Instead of 30 years, you can have 25 years. That means your loan like, will be lesser. At the same time, right, your mortgage servicing ratio uh, is reduced from 35 to 30. Okay, same thing. It will impact on the uh, capacity of the buyer. Okay, so how does this uh, impact to the sellers. The seller have to sell lesser 
because now the buyer is not that they don't want to pay so much is the buyer cannot pay so much due to their uh you know their their income capacity okay now so this is what happened in 2013 today what happened okay today 2024 do you know that CEA uh has actually uh removed or government in, in a way has actually removed two listings okay in the market and I, if i can remember correctly right this has never happened before okay i started this line in 2011 so it's about 13 years now it never happened before <coughs> so what happened is that there is these two property that is uh marketed at 2 million and i think uh you know we have to cannot keep going higher and higher. This HDB is meant to be what? Um, to be a public housing. Okay, so government say, okay, can, uh, please take down your listing. So this, this is something very interesting that I was like, wow, first time government actually do this. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Because uh, it's always been an open market, winning buyer, winning seller. Oh. So another thing that is changes, uh, 2024 today, uh, is that sellers can list their flats on HDB portal. It's a new thing now. So instead of listing a property guru, like or what, or put on newspaper, you can actually now uh, list your property through HDB portal. Okay. However, huh, you also need to take note that uh, over here is very small. It says that uh, HDB reserve the rights to remove listing. This is something you need to take note. Now, what, what are we talking about here? Okay, first of all, this new HDB portal, right? Uh, something new. So I thought of uh, taking, it's not really analytics, but um, it's something very, very new. That's why I was thinking to put into this talk. So you're all aware, okay, what's going on in the market. Now, first of all, this is a choice. It's not compulsory. It's not that you must list in the HTTP portal. Okay, so you have a choice to do so or not. Uh, if you are really thinking of relisting in HTTP portal, one thing you need to take note is that your full address will be revealed. Yeah, some owners may not be comfortable to reveal their full address to strangers. Okay, for two simple reasons. Uh, no show. Okay, so the buyer know your unit number already. Maybe the floor level that he don't like, he don't, he don't want to come. Or maybe the numbers add up, right? Don't fit her feng shui. So also don't come. So you may, then you may not know, you know, you may be shopping halfway, then you say, okay, I want to go back home. You prepared to go home to do the viewing already. Then the buyer no show. Well, you waste your time okay so this this could happen all right that's why uh for us on practice right we will not reveal the full address until the viewing uh timing that's how we do another reason that most many owners may not be comfortable is uh it opens up to scams so i'm not sure whether uh, hdb will, re will revise this or not um i think the idea of hdb is to make people feel that this is a genuine seller lah. but i just feel that revealing the full address right with today's uh, how creative scammers can be. Um, it's not, I think it's a safety breach, I feel. In my personal opinion, I feel it's a safety breach. I think, because for a stranger to know that this unit inside, right, as people want to sell, right, it, or, you know, it could be vulnerable. So I'm not sure how comfortable with you. For me, I actually definitely not comfortable. You can hear from me. Okay, another reason is a uh, low fall seller old house or ethnic quota affected uh, sellers, right? They will have a filter. So these are not the not so good attributes. So if your house are in this category, right? The buyer will just filter your house. And then your buyer, your, you don't even have a, your house don't even have a chance to show the buyer. Maybe your house is a bit older, but it's very well renovated, but it's get filtered away. So it's such a waste, right? Yeah. And most importantly is that HDB reserve the right to remove any listing. So um, this is a small group. Um, we did not put live today, so I think I can share with you all that uh, something I cannot put on the slides here, but I can share here is that actually in my company, we received an email sitting from our KEO that there is a table to follow. Lah. So uh, the guideline is about 10%. Okay, so meaning, right, let's, let's say the latest transaction, okay, in that area is 1 million. Okay, sorry, I tar it back. Ah. Yeah, this, this point is quite important. Now, this point can affect prices. I do not know it will or not, but it may affect prices later. Okay, I carry on. Uh. So let's say the last transition, transition there is 1 million. Okay, 10% uh, means uh, the seller should not be marketing more than 1.1 million. 
Okay, I repeat, uh, if the last transaction there is 1 million, the seller, the next seller who wants to sell cannot be marketing more than 1.1 million. That's the guideline. Okay, I do not know how hard are they going to enforce, but this is what is being uh, conveyed to us at this moment of time. Now, will this control price or not? So let's say you have a very good property in Tiong Bahru or Bukit Merah, a uh, new MOP flat, uh, and you, you are super, super high floor, maybe 30 floor, you know. The last transaction was 10 floor, 1 million, for example. And yours is 30 floor, well, view very nice. Your house is super renovated. And you feel that actually if 10 floor can go for 1.1 1. 1, uh, 1 million, you, your site, you are going to try for 1.2 million. Uh, you think it's reasonable, for example. But you may be, your listing may be removed. Okay. Now, in a large scale, how will this impact the market? I think in short, in the short term, I if this is going to be successful, uh, if this move is going to be successful by, uh, by government, then we would foresee that, we will, we will hope that, I don't know, okay, to side of the coin, uh, we may see that there are less and less, uh, what you call that, uh, record breaking. Uh, okay? Because now everybody are trying to, to, to push up, uh, right? Like for example, Henderson, um, last year I was viewing well, 1.3 uh, 1 million for a 5 room at Henderson there is like wow you know then today I saw people are marketing at 1.8 yeah because 1.5 done 1.5 was last done okay so this this is this is how the market is Kevin in the chat box says is the guideline shed meant for H meant for listings on the HTB portal or general property listing on the portal okay so um, the guideline shed right Okay, this guy is an email from our KO. Okay, yeah, that we are we are supposed to advise <laughs> sellers not to list too high. Okay, it is not said uh, it is not said only in the HTTP portal or general property listing moving forward. Okay, but this has been conveyed. So as I said, I do not know how hard the government is going to push in this. I personally feel should not be that hard because all along is an open reading by reading seller market. Okay, I just hope that uh, they don't come in hard. Uh. If they come in hard, that uh, means they really want to control prices. Uh, can one choose not to list with HDB? Yes, definitely. It's a choice. It's not compulsory. Okay. Okay, I move on. Uh. So there, there is some implication, but it's not confirmed yet. So you don't have to, don't, don't be too um, a concerned about this. Okay. Just observe what is going, what is going to, uh, how will the market react and how will the uh, HDB react as time goes by, okay? It's just in a very, very early phase. Now, now next, uh, I put this uh, quote here. Uh, this is by Confucius. I like it a lot. It says, study the past if you would define the future. Uh, in my own opinion, I don't think we can define the future, la, but definitely the past uh, can help us shape our future. Okay? So, very important, just now we go through the HDB chart, right? What is the history? What is the past helps us to make decision today? Okay, for example, okay, this was a, a, a listing, a HDB listing. Okay, and the, this, let's look at this listing. Huh? Okay, it's so at 592, at 2012. Okay, remember when was the, okay, let's put in the group chat. Anyone can remember which year did uh, uh, HDB pick? Where was the last pick of the HDB? Can you remember the chart? Which year was the pick? Was the previous pick? Do you want a refresher? Ah, Michelle said 2013. Yes, 2013 was pick. Then after the size, the price started to come down. Okay. So 2012, this seller sold at 592. Okay, total of 2013, uh, no, no transaction. Now, 2014, the next transaction was straight away 440. And then you see here, right? Don't have 500 already. All the way until 2017. <clears throat> All right. So it's actually uh, 150,000 down, you know. Or you would say 25% down. Wow, it's actually very hard pain for the next seller. This seller always very hard pain. Because they might they could have sold this kind of pricing. Okay. 
So let's talk about HDB supply. Okay, I want to know supply. Okay, very recently, HDB come up with this. Okay, so before that, I want to show you this. Uh, this article is very old already. Uh, it's 2019. Uh, so why I put it here? Because this article got this thing here. I want to show you. Okay, I, I wrote it bigger. Now you can see, right? Uh, in a much longer perspective, every year uh, is about 10,000 units. Okay, 10,000 units. Uh, so this is just right. Uh, or just something that can sustain in Singapore. Then for the past four years, uh, 19 to 22, we have a huge jump of 30,000 units per year. That's the supply, okay? Now, moving forward, right? Government uh, says that from 2021 to 2025, uh, they will come up with another 100,000 flats, okay? So averagely, uh, you will have how many? Averagely, you have 20,000 a year. So that is the supply. Okay, how about the demand? Okay, of course, I want to ask that. Okay, I want to ask the government. Okay, uh, do we have a population target? Okay, so in this 2020, okay, in this government.sg, it says that <clears throat> they do not have no, uh, they say no. Okay, oh, and then they also say that uh, at, as of 2020, okay, the total population is likely to be significantly lower than. 6.9 million okay by 2030 okay of course we talk about 6.9 then after that uh you know uh, singaporeans have a lot of hoo-ha then we start talking about 6.9 um but we need to ask our, ourselves this question now uh, do we need population to continue to grow okay this is something you need to know we need to uh, uh, be very real uh, okay now we have another problem is called the aging population uh, and this is very important for property, Singapore property, especially HDB. Okay, I'm going to elaborate more. Why especially HDB? Okay, so by 2026, two years later, one in five Singaporean uh, is going to be 65 years and above. Okay, so if your family got five people, one of you is above 65. Okay, it's, it's, <laughs> it's going to be... And the ratio is going to get lesser and lesser, uh, okay, over the years. Now, this one, huh, I want to show you. Okay, this is from Singstat, okay, Singapore population growth. And we only specifically for today, we want to look at citizens and PR. Why? Uh, it's because only citizens and PR can buy HDB, ma. okay? So, what I did, right, <clears throat> okay, is to use 2023 total population minus 2,000 2, total population divided by 23 years, okay? Average per year growth for the last 23 years, uh, Singaporeans is about, per year is about 30,000. Okay? Okay, I'll let you sink in uh, because a lot of numbers. Then I do the same thing for PR, okay? And then I found out that averagely for, 20, for the past 23 years, Every year, they grow by 740. So a very important figure here, add them together, is about 30,460. Okay, so this every year, our, uh, if, you know, if we do it consist, uh, constantly or averagely, every year, uh, Singaporeans and PR increase by 30,000. Okay, so just now we say, hey, you know, the supply every year, 20,000. Then we got 30,000 uh, uh, demand. So actually, it's under supply. Or can we say so? No, we can't do that yet. Uh, because we need to divide by household. So this is the average household size. Okay, you can tell that it, it's decreasing. Uh, okay, by 2020, right, it has been 3.09 per household size. So I have to get 30,000 divided by 3.09. I get 9,900. This is a very, very simple calculation. It cannot be specific, lah, this kind of thing. Uh, but we can have a sense. Okay, I'm going to make it very simple because I haven't included Singaporeans and PR who are what? Who chose to live in private. Okay, and then this one, I haven't even included the what? Uh, uh, EC supply. So, you know, we, we give and take, lah. Okay, but the whole idea here is that you have a sense of where the demand and supply is. Okay, 
So with the demand lesser than the supply in, in this broad perspective thing, right? Uh, do you think that HDB can continue growing at this rate? Okay, so this is something for us to really have a sense of it and um, be logical about it. Okay, that is to remind y'all 20,000 every year. Okay, now what's the key concern moving ahead? Just now I'll say that, that we have a key concern, especially for HDB, uh, is this thing. is our <clears throat> um, aging population, okay, and our baby boomers. So baby boomers, right, today, right, okay, is about 60 to 78 years old today, okay? <clears throat> so um, my, my parents is baby boomers, uh, okay? Most of us, we, we know a lot of baby boomers in our in, in, in our circle here. And good, a lot of them are very, still very healthy uh, and living a very good life. Expectancy has went up, you see? So as of 2022, our life expectancy is about 83. And for some reason, I don't know why girls, <laughs> girls uh, uh, live longer. La. Males are about 80, females about uh, 85. Okay. So my wife always say that uh, I should, uh, she should go first. So <laughs> I, I should stay behind. Uh, so I say, look at this number. Maybe, maybe I go first. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, the jokes aside, la. Okay, but the more important thing here is that the demand, right, can be a minus two effect. What does that mean? Okay. Baby boomers, 60 to 78 years old today. Okay. They may have HDB. Okay. HDB, because of these baby boomers reaching their life expectancy. Okay. Let's say uh, someone, a uh, baby boomer, a uh, 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 elderly pass on and they have a HDB, okay? What they hope to, what do they hope to do with the HDB? They pass on. Nobody in the HDB already. A lot of folks wants to pass on to their children, right? But today, uh, like myself, I, my, all, my sibling, all my siblings, I'm the fourth child. All my siblings have property. So those who have private definitely cannot hold another HDB. Those who have HDB cannot hold another, cannot hold a second HDB. Ma. So likely, uh, they will have to sell. Okay, then the proceeds is the inheritance. Uh, okay, instead of inherit the house, they sell the house, the proceeds is the inheritance. Okay, now, so when someone pass on, right? Okay, pass on, the supply, right? Plus one. You see that because one HDB need to be in the market to sell. So supply plus one. Okay. But the person who need the house pass on. Okay. So demand minus one. Can see or not? So every uh elder, I mean household that is a baby woman who pass on and no one's staying there anymore. Okay. For every one house, it is a minus two effect. So will that, or, or you can say supply is a plus two effect. Either way, it's the same. So can you see that up ahead, it could be a, a you know, the, the, it could be have a more drastic or more significant uh, gap between demand and supply. Okay, let's move on. Okay. So this is back to the to the chart here. So at least you can remember this chart is very important. Some key key pointers. Okay, this is what uh the peak is two o one three. Okay, today we are here. Honestly, nobody knows this will continue go up, go sideways, or go down. Okay, so this is what we need to know. Okay, I have a case study here. Uh, HDB versus condo. Okay, let let's see what it what it, how it, how it goes like. So in the past, I have this client, okay, um, upgraded from MOP uh, HDB to an EC. So what happens that time, okay, let's understand them, right? They also, what, uh, met, met the, the peak, okay, and then it's sliding down. Okay, it is sliding down. Now, if you know this, pro this block, right, it's actually very near MRT, okay? So at that time, right, you look at the prices here, before they can, 
the even go to what uh I think this is the highest here. Okay. So this was only 12 floor, but this unit was a high floor. It it can't even go higher. Okay, so it starts to drop already. So it sold at 538. Okay. And then in the same year, he bought a private at 995,000. Okay. Now, what happened after 10 years? Okay, what happened after 10 years? Did he make the right choice or not? Okay. Today, today, uh, the same five room would cost roughly around 650. Let's say 650. Uh. Okay, 650. Okay. And then the this same year, the private would cost around uh uh he bought this kind of price, this kind of size, about 1.7. Okay, now what happened in these 10 years? Uh, okay, if he were to hold on in 2014, if he were to hold on to the HDB and do nothing, today it will increase of 12%. Okay, but he chose to, <clears throat> chose to leverage on his profit, his cash out, and he replicate his this uh, capital building cycle. Okay, on around... Uh, same year, but of course, over here is MOP, I'm uh, building MOP. Then, today, he enjoyed close to 50% uh, gains. So, this is what happened in these 10 years. Okay. Now, of course, I would say that, well, I paint a very good picture. Like, it's like I choose, like, I cherry pick uh, what uh, case study. Okay. That is a successful case one. All right. Of course, you can say so, but what I'm what I'm trying to tell you here is not that you must you must upgrade to a condo. No, this is not what I'm trying to tell you. This is what I'm trying to tell you is that okay, at that time, right? My this client hall, okay, is seeing this, you know, where is seeing this, you know, he's around somewhere around here, you know. Okay, market start to slide down already. Okay, and he acted fast. Lah. He acted fast. Lah. Okay, but do he also have the concern and the worries for the sellers today, for the owners today? Because today, I honestly do not know, should I wait a bit longer because the price will go up? Or should I sell now because the price seems to go down? Or maybe I wait and see because it goes that way. Okay. It can be a very stressful moment. Nobody knows. He also feeling the same thing. He also do not know what the price will do. Okay. But what he did is he he made a bold decision to cash out and try to replicate the capital building cycle. But why does he want to do so? Okay. Because of this, because you need to ask why. Why does he choose to do so? Okay. Now back to this thing here. This is a very important question. This is a question that he also asked himself. Or many people who has actually done the uh, uh have done any selling and buying in the past years. Uh my myself, I did it in I think uh 2021. I also go through the same same emotional um you know concern. Actually, I'm very comfortable with my current house now, right? That time uh my 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 BTO was only about uh, what was was only about three hundred thousand, uh, less than three hundred thousand. So for me to uh, either clear off the loan or or every month just pay a very small mortgage, it's very very comfortable. You know, I don't need a bigger house. I don't need a a change or what. Anyway, this area is 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 something that I I very comfortable with, and it's very near MRT. I can walk to MRT, so I'm so comfortable now. Is it worth to change or not? This is something that a lot of people ask, and a lot of people, many people today has uh, who have done uh, any changes, they will go through this one. It's very common. Yeah. Uh, of course, there are some people who has the natural motivation, like for example, school. I want to move close to school, or maybe close to my parents, or maybe I want better facilities for my children. Of course, there are many people who have. Um, this natural motivation but i would say that there's also as many people who ask this very very important question and they go through the this i'm very comfortable is it really worthwhile to change or not 
Okay, everybody is doing so. I mean, do I need to do so? Okay, now bear in mind, uh, here I want to stop. Huh? Okay, today I just, I want to share about uh, the HDB cycle. Today I want to share what's uh, to look out for HDB. Uh, my main role here is to educate you on um, HDB market. Okay, so this case studies, I feel is inevitable, but I don't want you all to feel that I, I am trying to tell you, you must sell, you must upgrade, you know, kind of thing. No, it's not. Um, there are many steps to go through. And sometimes after going through a process, the best option is stay put. Okay. So this one is a process. Uh, <clears throat> you go through a, uh, uh, you need to go through a session, a proper session, uh, a, a advisory flow to determine what are the best options. And you get to decide the best option. Okay, let me carry on. Okay, okay. Now upgrading, right? Naturally means you need to pay more. Leh. So first you need to ensure safety net. Okay. But at the same time, even though you have the safety net, is it really worthwhile for you to go through the hassle? Okay, so this is something to ask. Okay. Now, so I have this uh chart here I share with you that I actually share with my uh uh, friends and clients and I hope to keep this uh, interactive la. this is designed that we are uh, uh, is, is a Q&A interactive and I, I will probably need a, a volunteer or someone who willing to um, put on a group chat okay no have to be you exact or it can be a certain profile that you want to see how it goes okay so what I'm going to fill in on the first box la, now la, is uh, a H so what kind of age you want me to put there? Anyone, you can just put in the group chat. I will take the first answer. So today, 2024. Okay. How old are you? Anyone want to put an age there? 30 years old, 35 years old, 40 years old. Hmm. Okay, maybe I'm not clear. So I'm going to put a figure here. This figure is your age. Okay. Uh, can I have a volunteer or someone who, I mean, just a, just a case study. Lah. Okay. okay. Someone put 50. Ah. Okay. 50. Okay. Now, retirement. Let's say, when is the retirement? Okay. Most people uh, will put what? Uh, 65. Lah, Singapore retirement age. Okay. Now, life expectancy, not just now we saw what 80, 80 to 85. Okay, but let's let's put it this way. Lah. We all hope that everyone uh, uh, grow healthily and happily. Let's say we go much older. Let's say by the time uh, uh, the medical very good. Okay, let's say 95. Okay, for example. Okay, so this imagine this is this is this is your age, lah, okay, or someone you know. Okay. What's next is that the usual kind of uh, model is through our active income years, right? Or uh, working years. From now until 60, or we retire, right? We will save a number. We will save uh, a certain figure. And then when we retire, right? We stop working. Okay? So we income stop. Okay? And then probably we will use up our, our savings until the uh, our life, until we graduate, lah. Okay, pretty nicely. But this model got a problem. Okay, this model got a problem. First of all, what if you outlive? Okay, what if you grow until, uh, you live until 100, 100, 105 years? Then you, your money is used up. So this is the first problem. Second problem is this. How about inflation? Because of inflation, right? What you plan for your uh, uh, later life, right? Maybe you use up by the time Maybe it used up at 87 years old. So your next eight years old, how? Okay. And this figure is never definite. You won't know. You won't, we, won't, we all won't know when we, were, when we graduate. Okay. Third question. Uh, third problem. Legacy. You may have children and you have nothing to leave, to leave behind. Okay. So this is a, a topic for another time. But this model, okay, definitely got uh it's not perfect lah. it's not it's, it can be better okay and today with like all the insurance that investment lah, especially like in it means group you are equipped with uh more options more tools to help you have a better retirement later 
Now let's come back to the, the question here where uh, just now uh, the case study or many people who have actually go through this, I uh, they actually have go through went through this thought process. Okay. Now we are comfortable now. Okay. Many people are comfortable now. Should we really change? Okay. The more important question is this uh, can you continue to be comfortable? Um can you become continue to be comfortable when you retire? Can I tell you what? Let, let's put this a bit hard for me to, to explain. Let's give the case study. Uh um wait uh, okay, I just anyhow call a name. Uh, it's not you, uh. I, I just give a name. Uh, okay, let's say I call a name uh Andy. Okay, for example. So Andy is is just like my uh the case study who in 2014 thinking of whether want to want to want to up, upgrade or not. Okay. So he go through this process. Okay, this is what he go through. So Andy was very comfortable now, and he's 50 years old. And he need to ask his question. After he retire, can he continue to be comfortable or not? Okay. Now, so we go through this exercise. Okay. First of all, ask what if we cannot retire? Okay, is this something you can accept or not? Because if you can't retire, it means you need to continue to work or we need to rely on our children. Is this something you can accept or not? Okay, some people cannot accept, huh? Some people can accept, huh? Yeah, some people feel that, uh, yeah, you know, uh, children should be filial, uh, should be taking care of me. You know, this is uh, to each his own, no wrong, no right. It's just that some, is this something you can accept or not? So let's say today, okay, you have a house, okay? And then let's, let's, let's give a number. Someone can put a number like, uh, how old is this house? 10 years old, 15 years old, 20 years old? Come, let's be interactive. How old you want this house to be? 20 years old. Okay, thank you, Michelle. So this is 20 years old. Huh? Okay, and just now we say today, what the five room is uh, around uh, six, six. Okay, for easy calculation, let's put 600. Huh? Okay, so the question here is a 20 year old house. Huh? If they choose... Okay, if we choose not to take any action, uh, it, <laughs> sorry, uh, usually I draw, but for today, I try to make very neat. <laughs> okay, so if they say they don't take any action, right, in 15 years time, when Andy retire, okay, this Andy today is 50 years old, he will retire in 65 years old. So he expect to retire 15 years later. The age of the house is 35 years old. <clears throat> With an older house, okay, um, the buyer loan and the CPF could be restricted for the next buyer. Uh, how much you think this property would worth in 15 years' time? Maybe you can put some figures in the group chat. Do you think it will go lower or stay the same or go higher? Today is 600,000. 15 years later, 35 years old, how much you... Lower. Uh, let's give a figure lah. I mean, just for the fun of this exercise. Five hundred. Okay. So probably about twenty percent down lah. Five hundred down. Five hundred Okay. Oh, two fifty. Okay. I I I'll, I'll get the I'll get the. Kevin is more optimistic. Levon is very <laughs> pessimistic. <laughs> okay. Um. But no worries. I take the first one just for exercise. Ah, uh, you can go through. Okay. Uh, actually, anyway, thanks, uh, Andrew, Michelle, and CJ. With your owning the video, makes me feel like I, I'm talking to a live person. Okay, so let's say we at this age, and he wants to right size. Okay, maybe savings use up, or you know, uh, investment didn't do well. For example, the last stand is your house. Okay, or is is Andy house. And Andy wants to right size to a three room HDB. Okay, so maybe okay if the if the four room is four three fifty, maybe the three room around three fifty lah. And after he right size, right, okay, he will have balance of one hundred fifty thousand. Okay, is this enough or not? Now, what if uh, he today okay today uh, choose to offload his it? offload his HDB, okay? And then 
offload to another property lah. Okay, let's say lah, let's say it's a, a since we use condo, okay, it's a one point five million condo, okay. Now what he is essentially doing here, right? Okay, when he's off to a HDB, right, and looking for the another property to buy, right? What he's trying to do here is this. He's trying to replicate the capital building cycle. Okay, how can you repeat your success? Today, Andy has, has a property that profited already. Okay, how can he continue to, 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 to profit this way? Okay, I always ask my friends. My friends always say, um, you know, you buy one VTO, you earn 100 to 300,000 know, after, after the MOP. How many HDB you want to buy? <laughs> if you know every VTO, you will earn uh, some six, six figures. How many HDB you want to buy? Of course, as many as you want. Uh, but the problem is we got policy. Uh, we can only buy two. And then the second one got levy uh, and so on. So uh, it, it, it makes it like not make sense. But let's say if we put away all this policy, right? Of course, you want to keep repeating this cycle. Huh? So HDB to HDB is very hard uh, to repeat. Okay, What we can do is we can look at other kind of property. And what he's, he's essentially doing here is to replicate the capital building cycle. Now, same question I asked you as earlier. Okay, if they don't, after he, after he, Andy changed to a 1.5 million property, right? And uh, um, if he don't do anything, uh, Okay, he, the only thing that he did is to change to one five million property. Okay, and during the retirement, uh, when he's 65, right, what would this property be? So I want to be very fair. If HDB goes down about 20%, right, then this should also go down 20%, uh, so to be fair, fair. Uh, so he's about 1.2 million. Now we need to ask ourselves, uh, if he were to right size to the same three-room flat, how much will he have balanced? Uh, my max is uh, 850, correct? Should be there. Lah. Okay, so this balance is 850,000. So the question here is, is this a better choice or is this a better position? Okay, we need to ask ourselves, when we retire, right, we will have a fully paid property. Okay, does Andy wants to be A or wants to be B? Okay, most importantly today, I will say that I will show you this chart. Why Andy go ahead is because of replicating the capital building cycle. Okay, and if we don't do anything, then just now like what? Uh, it only increased what? 12% in the last 10 years. Okay. Now, so this is what it actually go through. And this is what makes a lot of people uh, decide to, you know, jump on the wagon. Okay. Just remember I say, when you do an upgrade, you are essentially paying more. Why, why pay more for a house <laughs> when you are really comfortable? Okay. So the idea here is this thing called to increase your uh, asset net worth. Okay. Because by the time you retire, your house or your assets are all fully paid. No more loan. Okay. It's all at your disposal. So he asks, HDB. Okay. Minus uh, he's a three room flat. He will get hundred eighty thousand. This is a. Or he choose to upgrade, and today is one point seven. He can minus away a three room flat at one point two million and balance one point two million. Or he choose to have uh two properties, and uh minus this is about two point four million. Okay, so if given a choice, right? Uh. Where does Andy want to be? Does he want to be A or B or C? Okay, so if given a choice lah, and given uh, with uh, capabilities, okay, I'm not talking about, you know, uh, stretch yourself, something that's comfortable, okay? Uh, not so comfortable, but still comfortable and safe, okay? Carry on. Now, the question here that most people say, okay, let, let me... Let me go ahead uh, and do the upgrading. Uh, okay. Is this thing, is your base retirement protected? Because today, most people will agree with me. Uh, 180,000 is really not enough. Or here what we say, 150,000. It is not enough. Okay. It's, it's definitely not enough uh, for retirement. <laughs> do you dare to retire with 150,000? 
Okay. Now, when we say upgrade, it does not mean must upgrade the condo. Okay. You can upgrade to a bigger house is also upgrade. Okay. It's also an improvement. Upgrade by renewing the lease, changing an older property into a newer property. Okay. So that, you know, the, the value is, is retained. It's also considered upgrade. It doesn't mean it has to be has to be private. Okay. And most importantly today, I will say that you have to really look at your safety net and we have to go through the advisory process to know whether uh, uh, it, the, it's the, what options are available for you. Okay. It's definitely not one size fit all. Uh. Okay. So this client, what I did is that he actually bought an EC. Okay. And what happens is that they, they like the EC so much. They do not want to uh, move. So, but they, they like the idea to increase their asset so that during when they retire, right, the net worth is more, they have more choices, okay? Maybe they don't need to go straight down to a three-room flat. They can go to a two-bedroom condo, uh, very comfortable, quiet, you know, good for retirement, okay? Um, what they did is they part sell. The property increased at 1.25 and then they part sell, uh, so one name took out and they go and invest in another property, another two bedroom. Now, what I did, I structured for them, okay, for uh in a way that the mortgage uh, with 3.5%, uh, okay, the mortgage is lower than the rent, the the the, the potential rental. So in a way, uh, they have cash flow like uh, rental of 3008 minus mortgage of 2008, right? Okay, they got cash flow of 1000 Today, the Interest rate went down at three percent. They would have, they will have even have more cash flow because the mortgage lower already. Then if the in rental increase over the years, he will also have more cash flow. So today they are already enjoying cash flow. Okay, total position value today is two point five. So by the time when they retire, we do not know about this figure, but that's definitely going to be a definitely going to be better than you know uh from the start. Now how about the very popular one, BTO to condo. You know, they sold at uh, 440, okay? And then it moved to a condo at 900. Today, it's 1.25, 38% growth. Okay, so did the asset net worth grow or not? Okay, and if today you retire and buy a five-room flat at, three-room flat at 500,000, you still got 750,000. Okay, so that is the top process. Uh. And I said, as I said, no need, no need to say, you know, have to be condo one. You know, you, when you upgrade a size, uh, this is a four room. Okay, four room. Okay. And they position to an EA. Much bigger house. Okay. Remember, you see how much they bought? Today, wow, grow so much. Okay, is it a better position? If today this owner want to uh, retire, okay, maybe he buy a uh, three room flat or a two room flat. Okay, let's say 400,000. Okay, he would have 470,000. Better position than here, right? Yeah, so that is the, that is something I want to share. Lah, okay, it's, okay. So, because, uh, um, as I said, whether you should, whether someone should, uh, okay, let me put it away. I'm not here to, to give a one size fit all solution where uh, everybody today must sell. Everybody today must buy, you know, no, no, no. It's always uh uh to each has its own uh case. Okay, every some 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 to some people is don't sell, don't buy, just do nothing now, just hold on first. Okay. Um and everybody is unique. Okay, you have your unique situation, your family is different from someone else's family, and the, your needs and one is different. Okay, so we definitely need to go through a process to lay out the options for you, okay? And then you get to choose what is the most, most, uh, 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 the most beneficial for you. So um, for this in, uh, optimized group, uh, image group, what I feel is that I, I want to extend this uh, discovery session, okay? I think that most people who come to such a seminar uh, are always looking for a better thing, like uh, a better home for the family and so on. And of course, People want to know how to avoid headaches uh, coordinating the sale and buying or how to avoid hassle and frustration in, in, when moving or 
you know, is it really worthwhile for you to, uh, to make a move? And does your does the figures make sense to you? Okay, do you see a better? Okay, in short, in short, sorry, do you see a better future making a move now? Okay, and everybody is different. And it's very difficult to you know how many people here? There are thirty three of you here. Very difficult to say that uh, to 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 um to base on one person and then do a group sharing like that because one of you will be very excited, thirty two of you will be sleeping because it's not relevant for you. So for image group, right, what I feel is that uh, I want to extend this uh, 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 discovery session to all of you that um, what we will do is we will go through a very simple home planning process. This is what I do with all my friends and my clients. Okay, And they feel that um, it's very useful because we identified unique solutions okay, to uh, whatever goal that you are trying to get. And most people will feel it useful. Lah, okay? And since this is your entitlement, Okay, as our guest, our Zoom guest today, every, everyone who are here, okay, I feel that um, you can consider taking up this uh, discovery session. Okay, what I will do with you, you uh, and you and your spouse or your, let's say you're buying or you are planning for yourself, that means of course yourself. If you're planning with a family, that means definitely need your spouse. Okay, first of all, we need to do a safety net assessment. This is the most important. Know your safety net first. Do you have or not? If you have, how much? Okay. The more safety net you have, the more choices you have, the more things you can do. Now, um, okay, so this will include all the strategy, all the techniques, okay, uh, uh, on how do we actually uh, uh, do the figures out, like all the, all the decoupling, like if you need, all the uh, pledging uh, if you need and so on, all will be included here, okay? Second thing, what we do, we will strategize options, okay? What options you have, okay? Uh, and we will go through the pros and cons, okay? I want to be very neutral here, okay? Because uh, we optimize uh, what Imi has set up is an educational thing, okay? Um, so we need to definitely tell you what's the pros and cons, okay? You need to be able to, uh, nothing is 100% perfect, but if you can accept the cons and move ahead, then that is the choice. Lah. Okay. I always like to joke. Uh, my wife can accept my weakness. That's why she married me. Okay, if you know, if you know what I mean. <laughs> now, of course, we will go through selection exercise. Most people will say, wow, okay, let's say I'm very cons uh, I want to make a move now. But what is what is there to buy today? Everything seems so expensive, right? Okay, uh, it's very stressful as a buyer today. I understand. Okay, because every month, what every other month got record breaking. I understand. So we go through a selection exercise, and this is the part where I will make it very simple and easy for you. No viewing, no view, physical viewing as of now. The more you view, the more confused you become. Okay, because house naturally give you an emotional, uh, response at the same time. But but as an investor. As an informed, intelligent, uh, decision-making individual, you want to be logical. So if you go and start to view house without going through all these emotions kick in, very hard to contain later. Okay, so we will go through a session exercise, and you will know that which and where and what kind of uh, uh, uh product or, or or property you should be looking at, and it's very logical. It's all done on the table. And you we over cup of uh, coffee or tea or some cakes, very comfortable. Okay, I will do all the work. You just enjoy the process. Okay, so these are the three things that we do. And finally, if let's say you want to proceed, we will hand help you to single out that unit. Because uh, I'm not sure whether do you agree with me or not. In a good, a lot of people say, hey, this project can buy or not. Then I have to ask the next question: What you need? Okay, do you agree with me that there are Lousy units in a good project. And also, there are good units in the lousy project. Okay? A lousy project will make money, man. Yeah. So, it's really down to big picture. And then, don't just stop at what project. Go straight to the unit. Okay? And uh, we will do this single out, singling out uh, execution also. Okay? So, that is something that I feel I can extend to you all uh, with this uh, uh it means uh, optimized group. 
And um, yeah, since this is your entitlement, why don't take it up? Uh, it's it's, uh, uh, it's uh, complimentary. And I feel it's an entitlement. Uh, just, just let me know. Uh, I think later Imin will send you something. And if you all want, you can, uh, you can actually uh, just connect, co connect, me, uh, connect with me. Okay, so, so far, this is what I want to share today. I hope to keep it sweet and short. And I want to open up the ground for any Q&A.